And then after we get saved, we've listened to that word and we've gotten saved, then at times we're in those storms and we're crying out, God, where are you? Sometimes, sometimes my only prayer is help. That's all I can pray. Help. Don't know what, how, how or what to pray anymore. Just help, Lord. The Bible says the Spirit maketh intercession for us at those times. Amen. But if God is not your Father, He's the one that's crying out, asking you to respond. You know, Psalm chapter 19, verses 1 and 3 talk about the heavens. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament will show His handiwork. When I grew up over in Africa, there were times, and I'm, I'm sure it must be because there's such a lack of pollution and, and smog and, and things like that, but the, the, the sky is crystal clear. And I'm sure you've heard of having sunstroke. There is such a thing as moonstroke. In certain areas of the world, where the moon can be shining the sunlight, reflecting the sunlight so strongly that you can actually have a stroke from that, from that light. And when we slept outside in the hotter times of the, the year, we had to have shades over our bed. Um, they were usually part of the mosquito net because we had problems with those too. But you could actually sit outside with a full moon over there and read a book. It was that bright of a light. The heavens declared the glory of God. I loved laying out there on the sand dunes and just looking up at the stars. Just, I mean, crystal clear. You could see for, I'm sure, thousands of miles. A lot more stars visible over there than there are here. It's hard for me to understand how people cannot believe in God. How there can be an atheist. How, how there can be atheists. You know, there is a story about an atheist. He was walking one day out in the forest and he was saying, man, this is beautiful. You know, the babbling brook next to him and beautiful trees and, and uh, flowers and just, just admiring nature. Yet he didn't think about God until a bear came up and started chasing him. So he starts running and running and running, trying to get away from that bear. Bear's catching up to him. Bear finally gets him and slaps him down on the ground and puts his paw on him. And the atheist says, Oh, God! Everything freezes. Light comes down from heaven. And a voice says, Oh, now you want to believe in me? <laughs> and the atheist says, Well, I don't know about that, but could you make the bear a Christian? <laughs> so, the, the voice says, all right, light goes out, the stream starts running again, the birds start chirping again, the bear takes his hand off the man, puts him together and says, God, thank you for what I'm about to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Had to pray for his food, he was a Christian now. <laughs> but you know, even in the United States, I can't imagine how you can watch a sunset as glorious as it is. All the colors of the rainbow and then some. And not believe that something created that. Amen. How can you even dream that that just happened? Come on, that's right. That's right. <coughs> so my plea is, my plea is tonight, if you don't have God as your Father, you cannot cry out to Him in the middle of the storm and get an answer. The only prayer that will be heard. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Amen. Jesus died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose again the third day so that we might have eternal life. But he had to die for your sin because the wages of sin is death. Accept Christ tonight. I'm sure there's a number of folks here that can, can help you Amen. with that decision if Jesus Christ is not your Savior today. <coughs> it's just a free gift. Psalm chapter 89, verse 9 says, Thou rulest the raging of the sea when the waves thereof rise, thou stillest them. Psalm 107, 29, He maketh the storm a calm so that the waves thereof are still. As I've said, you know, life 
get so hectic sometimes, we have to be reminded. The Lord continually tells us, don't forget me. Don't run past me. Slow down. Slow me down, Lord. Ease the pounding of my heart by the quieting of my mind. Steady my hurried pace with a vision of the eternal reach of times. Give me, amidst the confusion of my day, the calmness of the everlasting hills. Break the tension of my nerves and muscles with the soothing music of the singing streams that live in my memory. Help me to know the restoring power of sleep. Teach me the art of taking minute vacations, of slowing down to look at a flower, to chat with a friend, to pat a dog, to read a few lines from a good book. Remind me each day of the fable of the hare and the tortoise, that I may know that the race is not always to the swift, that there is more to life than increasing its speed. Let me pause to look upward into the branches of the towering oak and realize that it grew because it grew slowly and well. Slow me down, Lord and inspire me to send my roots deep into the soil of life's enduring values that I may grow toward the crowns of your rewards. You know, sometimes, many years ago, I was going through a difficult time. And uh, one, of, one of the elder brothers at the church that we were at in Ohio at the time came to me and kind of shared and I a concept with me that really helped me to handle that trial and others past it. A lot of times we feel like we're just overwhelmed with things that we're caught in a net. This is the image that he gave me. It feels like we're caught in a net. I don't know if you've ever caught anything in a net. Uh, growing up in Africa, any, I'm going to hear of eating frog legs. Good stuff. The frogs over there grew really big. But we would we would go frog hunting, and we didn't use gigs. We shot them with a pellet gun and uh, scooped them up with a net. But when you catch anything in a net, maybe a fish, a butterfly, doesn't that creature start struggling, trying to get out? And when it does that, what happens? It gets more tangled up. That happened to those frogs. We'd, we'd scoop it up in a net and it just, you know, legs going all, every which way but loose, couldn't get out. It, all it did was tangle it up even worse. And Brother Gary shared with me, he said, maybe that net has been thrown over you to rescue you from the cliff you were heading towards. Maybe that net isn't from the devil. Maybe it's not something that's going to hurt you. Stop struggling. Be still. Be still. You know, so many times we get, so, so many times I think we get into a problem, <coughs> into trouble, into something we, we're not sure how to handle, and we struggle. Like I said before, you do everything you can in your power to do what you have to do. Now, God doesn't expect you, if you're out of work, to sit home expecting a phone call to be made to you and you get a job. You've got to do something to make something happen. That's not what this is talking about. This, this, this goes back to when it talks about putting on that armor. You have to do something to get that armor on. You can't just stand there and it's going to jump on you like, uh, what's... Iron Man. Yeah, Iron Man, thank you. Like Iron Man, he just stands there and it all jumps on him doesn't happen for the Christian. You have to take that helmet of salvation and accept that gift of salvation. Put it on your head. You've got to put that armor on. And then, when you've done all you can, stand. Maybe the trial that you're in is a net from the Lord. It may be something from the devil. But I know one thing, the Lord can pull it off, whether it's his or the devil's. I trust this has been helpful tonight. 
with uh, with the Lord closing the door on Genesis Baptist Church just about a month ago. Pastor Avery Barnador advised me, maybe it's time for you to just be still for a little bit. And uh, that's one reason the Lord laid this message on my heart, because I'm preaching to me. And I hope it's a, a help to you. If you've got a trial, maybe you've been struggling with it. Maybe you just haven't wanted to let it go. You know, maybe you have a, a, a relative that's that's sick or relative that's not saved, that's that's a trial. Amen. That's a storm. But you can have peace in the middle of that storm as you give that to the Lord. Believe in the middle of the storm. That becomes the victory. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Let's pray. Love you tonight, Father. Thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the King James Bible, for the Old and New Testament, Lord, that teaches us lessons in life. Thank you for the life of Jesus Christ and the things he did that show us how to deal with life and reveal who he is and what he is for us. Father, help us to learn to be still to access that peace that passes all understanding when we yield to you. Help us, Lord, to stop struggling and to let you take control. I pray that you would just uh, go with us tonight safely to our homes, strengthen our hearts, bring us back at the next appointed time to be together and Pray that you would help us to serve you in all we do. In Jesus' name.
Lord, to, to render the, 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 the sinner right back where he needs to be. And Lord, I ask you to do that now. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. With eyes still bowed. If you have a need tonight, you just, just step out. If you have prayer needs, you know there are plenty of brothers here that will pray for you. If you need salvation. You can know tonight. You can leave here tonight knowing the Lord is your Savior. Knowing that if you can close your eyes to death tonight, that heaven would be your home. Right now, 
young adults, all of our, not so, every, all, we're all, you know what, it takes all, every one of us to, 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 to be this body of Christ in his arms. And, uh, you know, I'm just thankful for each and every one of you. In times of struggle, we, man, we like to struggle. Hey, you know what, the thing about it is that we ain't ever have to worry about be, uh, anybody here not being ready for a fight because we've all pl been through enough of them that we're no longer afraid of that anymore. So, the good news, the, the upside of that is, is that uh, we know how to, we can use the sword and spirit. Now we just got to figure out how to stand still sometimes. Anybody else? Amen. Now I want you to know that altar is always open. Now, if, you, if you don't know the Lord, or if you just really need someone to just uh, pray with you and it's just of a room full of people, can I tell you that I understand something about shyness? I am an overcompensated introvert. <laughs> That's hard to believe. I know. That's because none of y'all saw me grow up. But I'm here to tell you. I know so you're like more of a failure. That's right. <laughs> Brother Raymond, we be close. Dear Lord, thank you for each and every one of us that come out tonight. Thank you for all that you do for us, dear Lord. All your praises, dear Lord. And we thank you, dear Lord, for the, you, get, you make us able to praise you, dear Lord. Pray for the, all the lost, our 